The sweat is rolling. The shirt has come untucked. We're out here making it happen. Week number three, stack and tilt. Let's go, baby. Woo! Hey, everybody. Welcome back. You've heard all this before. I've already played one round. I'm going to play a second round. I hope I'm not too gassed to do this, but this is week number three. In case you haven't been following along, I'm doing a review, an in-depth review of the Stack and Tilt Golf Swing. I've watched a lot of Tom Segudo. I've watched Golf Tech. I've watched Nick Taylor. There are other ones out there. There's tons of Stack and Tilt guys out there. I've seen a lot of their videos over the years, but this is my first in-depth review with a genuine attempt at trying to get some sort of mastery in, in, in at least a couple of months. I know you can't master it in a couple of months, but I'm gonna see just how far down the road I can go, and who knows how long this will last. This is uh, Barton Creek. Let me set the stage here, get this uh, measured up a little bit. It's a par four. Uh, I, have not I have not mastered driver yet. I've had a lot of questions, a lot of people asking me about driver. They say many of the same things. They say, listen, with the wedges, with the short irons, even the mid irons, stack and tilt is absolutely awesome. The consistency, the low point, the power, the contact is just, as Tom says, super crispy KFC. But when you get into the long irons and the fairway woods, and especially the driver, they had trouble with that contact and they had trouble with their distance. I haven't solved the mystery yet, but I have made some progress. So I want to hit this drive. Let's see if I can put a good one on now that the camera's rolling. Uh, I've, I've got it aimed about 245 down the middle, uh, 400 yard par four. So I noticed a few things in watching Tom's videos. When he sets up with just about any club, he's got this front foot flared pretty well to where the knee can almost just flex toward the target. I think that's a little hidden, a little hidden Easter egg. And also, as with any good golf swing, even with this golf swing, you may not shift your pressure back to your back foot and then back to your front foot. You keep your pressure on your front leg throughout the golf swing. It doesn't mean A, that the right leg does not assist in some small capacity, and B, it doesn't mean that on the downswing, you can't move toward the target even more. So what I've been working on is, when they say shoulder down, club in, they want this lead shoulder to go down, stay over the golf ball, stay over this left foot, and the hands to come in and around. From here, it's almost like you get so out of balance this way that you start a little trust fall toward the target and your body's natural mechanisms level you back out and move you toward the target to catch up. And if you just stay out of its way, that autopilot, all right, let, let, me, let me just try and demonstrate. We'll see. We'll see how, how close I can get here, all right? Weight on the front leg pretty much. Let's see. Not my best. Pop that one up way in the air. I was a little bit off balance, but the power was there. Even though I popped it up, it still traveled about 230. So not starting off this video with exactly the best example, but like I said, I haven't mastered it yet. I've still got more work to do, but those keys, that's moved the needle for me quite a bit. Now, something else that's been going on for the last, I would say, three or four weeks is no matter what I've tried, I've lost power. I think I've lost somewhere between 10 and 15% on almost every club in my bag, and I couldn't explain it. I didn't really know why. Well, as of all of my work that I've been putting in this week, it's been building a little bit at a time until I am where I am now, where maybe... I'm not 100% with my yardages yet, but I am so close. I am a lot closer than I was. I've got 177 yards here. I've got a six iron. And let's just see what we can put, some kind of move on this golf ball. It's right at the target. Might have caught it a shot thin. Oh boy, that hit the front of the green. Got collared a little bit, and now it's traveling a total of 198, 199, 199.4. But like I said, it came out a touch thin. It carried 175-ish. 
Uh, that is on the green and it's gonna give me a three putt because I ended up 68 feet behind the hole. But when you take that left shoulder down or that lead shoulder down and the right, the right forearm in and you get into this position, it's real easy just to keep going forward and then your body says, oh, hell, we're gonna fall over if we don't, oh, look at that, come back to a perfect impact position and turn all the way through to target. It's like a little autopilot. Okay, another driver here. We get another bite at the apple. Um, I have barely, barely put in any work. I've just started to introduce a little bit of the driver and it is, it is a little bit more difficult because the ball's not on the ground. The low point's not after the golf ball a couple of inches. You know, when you're hitting an iron off the turf, heck, even, even a fairway wood or a hybrid off the turf, it's more of a sweep with your low point definitely after the golf ball. Ball first, then turf. Take a divot, right? With the driver, it's different. With the driver, it's almost a level sweep and the tee that I have, it's not variable. So I think it's a little bit too high. I almost have to float the club through the golf ball with some really uh, extreme precision to say the least. So we'll do our best here. See if we can't put one in the fairway. That's a good lash. That's a good contact. Yeah, carrying out to what looked like maybe 230-ish. And gonna roll a little bit. And of course, it won't crest the hill and go down the bottom of the hill to throw an extra 20 yards of roll on. But that's 240 yards. Not bad considering, you know, it's really early days with this driver technique. I've still got to work on it. Now I've got 103 yards, touch up the hill, got to be a high shot, got an approach wedge in my hand. With the wedges, it's the same setup as the driver. It's the same intention. It's just that you, you move your back foot in just a little bit to come in a little steeper on the golf ball. Oh, that's right at it. Be the right distance all day. That's, oh, and the backspin. It was perfect. It was right there in birdie territory. And I spun it back into the fringe. Ah, it's a little bit of bad luck, but man, when you do that fall toward the target, when you get here, it's almost like you're trying to turn so much that you start to fall. And when you start to fall, you just keep letting it fall and just trust that all this is gonna move back underneath you to get you squared back up and in balance. It's, it's crazy. Again, I'm no expert, I'm no pro. This is just, you know, again, early days. Uh, but these are my findings so far. Go in. Don't you, there's no backspin on, there's no backspin on a 12 foot chip. There's no, that thing's backing up. Stop. Stop. It's not even, it's not even close to accurate. There's no way a 12 foot chip spins back. Anyway, it gave me my par. Yeah, appreciate that. Anyway, like I said, I'm no pro and it's still early days, but what I started with, if you haven't watched the beginning videos the first two weeks, you should go back and check them out. But I started small and with small clubs. I started with small swings, going slow with the higher lofted clubs in my bag. And that 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 movement that Tom makes, I went deeper into that. He's just sitting there going back and forth, showing a consistent low point. And I went deeper in study into that. And I was like, wait a minute, what, what else is happening here? What else is happening? Yeah, he's got his weight on his front foot. Yeah, he's just making these small little swings and kind of keeping his head, you know, not, not duct taped in place, but certainly very quiet. He's keeping his head very quiet and his shoulders just rotate around. But what else is going on? Well, he's moving toward the target almost from the beginning of the swing. In the beginning of the swing, he's moving even more toward the target, more toward the target, more toward the target, still at the target, and then up to bring himself to a, a standing position again. And if you watch any of the stack and tilt guys, you see that same thing, this constant, almost from the time you take it away, you're moving toward the target from almost the beginning. All right, we've got a par three. This would be a good little test, 100 and, 
38 yards. I'm going to play a little safe. I'm, I'm going to cheat it a little bit right. 139 yards, about 15 feet down the hill. Uh, I'm still, I, I don't make what I feel like are full swings yet. So I'm going to hit a nine iron here and uh, probably just take a little bit off of it and really get my weight kind of moving into it. And that's right at it. If that's the, if that's the right distance. Uh, it's right on my flag. I sat there to aim. I should have aimed at the flag. <laughs> no, it was the perfect distance. I would have made a, almost a hole in one, but I set my marker way over here. Man, that's beautiful. It is 15 feet away now because I played it safe. It's going to give me a two putt. Oh my God. But that is beautiful contact, effortless contact. It's just this trust fall toward the target the whole time. You just think shoulder down, club in, and you just keep falling. And your body's natural mechanisms figure out how to balance you without you falling over. It's like this self-preservation cheat code. All right, we got one more chance at driver here. Come on, man. Come on. Let me get one good driver for the folks at home. All right, we're setting up, thinking about getting through it. Sit in, get the leg right, turn in, shoulder down. That's, that's much better. That's much better. That's really good contact, I believe. This one is flying probably near 240 total, out to 255. That is a really good driver. I, I'm going to finish the hole. But that's a good driver to show you. 95 miles an hour with my club head speed, which is a little bit of a tick up above my norm. That's the other thing I'm noticing with that fall and that move toward the target. Man, everything's moving in that direction. When you, when you turn your shoulders, you're getting going toward the target and then you're still going toward the target and you're just going toward the target the whole way. That little continual motion toward the target, that trust fall toward the target, that adds that extra gear of power for me, for me. I can't say it would do it for everybody. Again, I'm not an expert on this swing. Maybe some of the guys that I've been tagging in these videos could chime in. Maybe tell them I'm making these videos. They're probably unaware that I'm alive. 122 yards, about six feet up the hill. This is a baby pitching wedge, baby pitching wedge. Let's see if we can't Stick this one close to finish this out. Give it a little tug to the left. And it's going toward the left side of the green. Stay on. All right, we're on. Probably enough for two put. Man, I am gassed. I have been out here working my butt off for the last three weeks, two put par, trying to dive in and discover the secrets of the stack and tilt swing on my own. Thank you so much for joining along. This is gonna continue. As I said, I may have a few tricks up my sleeve in the coming weeks. I'll definitely be taking this out on course before too long. Uh, I need to put in a little bit more work before I do that and then I'll test it. And then I may come back in the lab, put in some more work, try and tweak it and then take it out for another on course test before I put this on the bed. I think I've got some other reviews planned for the very near future that are gonna be coming up once I finish the stack and tilt. But you know, this one's so good right now. This one's promising right now. I don't know how easy it's gonna be for me to just drop this one and go to something else. Maybe, maybe this will be something that I stick with for a little bit longer time. In any event, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so down below and select all on the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. Tons of you guys are missing videos as I put them out. Share these around, please. Go tell the people that I've tagged. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell those other people that are struggling. Help us grow the channel. Check out the links in the description below to save yourself some money. I've worked really hard to try and get these companies to play ball and get you guys some discounts, so go take advantage of it. Use the Amazon code down below also to help support the channel without costing yourself any more money. <laughs> See you next week.